Yo, what's going on, guys? Tanmay for Simple Snippets, and welcome back to a new video tutorial under Network Security or Information Security. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at another algorithm operating mode that is the cipher block chaining. So in the previous video, we saw electronic code book, which was the very first algorithm mode and was very simple. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at cipher block chaining. Also, if you have missed any of the previous videos from this entire network security playlist, you can check out this playlist and I'll drop the link of the playlist in the video description. And also you can see a card on the top right corner. So with that being said, let's start off with today's topic that is cipher block chaining. So cipher block chaining, as the name suggests, there is a sort of chaining that is going on that is a feedback mechanism is provided in this mode. So if you've seen the previous electronic code book algorithm mode, there was no feedback mechanism, right? So the plain text was divided into different blocks and the key was applied and encryption was performed, right? So every time the same key was applied to get the cipher blocks. So this is plain text one, plain text two, plain text three and so on and so forth. Similarly, we were getting cipher text one, cipher text two and so on and so forth, right? So that was the case of electronic code book. However, what we are looking at right now is cipher block chaining wherein there is a feedback mechanism and from the right hand side, you can see the diagram, but let's first read a little bit of theory and then try to understand the working. So chaining adds a feedback mechanism to a block cipher. Okay. So the result of the encryption of the previous block are fed back into the encryption of the current block. So this is the basic crux of this entire technique and we'll see the working in a minute. So in the first step, the first block of the plain text and a random block of text called as initialization vector is used. Okay. So let's side by side also see the working. So in the step number one, what is happening is we are taking the plain text. So let's say the plain text is very long, right? So we are splitting it into different blocks. So this is the first block and the block size is predefined, right? So generally it is 64 bit, but it can also be greater or smaller than that. So let's say we're working on the first block of plain text. So we take the plain text and we take an initialization vector, which is of the same size. So this IV is nothing but a stream of characters, sort of like a key, but not exactly the key. The key is separate, but this IV is just used for the starting block. And later on, we'll see how it gets modified, but we are just using this to add a little bit of randomness. Okay. So the IV has no special meaning. It is simply used to make each message unique. So I'll explain you how this works in a minute and the value of IV is generated randomly. So this adds to the complexity of the process and then the hackers cannot easily break this code. Okay. So we'll see how that works in a minute. So what is happening is we are taking this IV. So if the plain text is of 64 bit block, so even the IV is going to be of 64 bit block. And then we are going to be performing an XOR operation. So XOR is a Boolean algebraic or digital operation that happens because ultimately these are all digital codes, right? So in the computer or in the network, it's going to be zeros and ones. So we are not performing operations on ABCD, but those characters are basically converted to their digital codes, which basically comprise of zeros and ones, right? So this XOR operation is operated or performed on these zeros and ones. And then what we get is an intermediate value, which is going to be XOR of plain text and the IV and that mediator or intermediate value is going to be encrypted using the key. Okay. So the key is going to be used in every step. So you can see, but what happens now is after the encryption, we get the cipher text block one, right? So this cipher text block one is fed back as the new IV. So you can consider this as the second IV for plain text block two. Okay. So this cipher text block one is XOR with plain text block two to get the intermediate value. Then it is again encrypted using the key. And then we get cipher text block two, which is fed back to the next step. Okay. So this is where that feedback mechanism comes into picture. You can see this blue arrow. So that's the feedback mechanism that is working and this adds a lot of randomness. So how does it make things random? So let me just explain. So in the previous video of electronic code book, what was happening is let's say we have two blocks. Okay. So if one block consists of ABC as plain text and second block also has ABC. So this is PT1 and this is PT2. What was happening is after performing encryption using the same key K1 and K1 over here, after performing the encryption, we were getting the same output, right? Let's say the output of cipher text is XYZ. This is CT1. So even for plain text block two, since the same key is used and there is no feedback, the output is again going to be XYZ or XZY which is going to be cipher text two, right? 
So here you can see that repetitive same ciphertext are generated and this makes the electronic code book a little bit weak compared to other algorithm modes because then hackers can get these values and then they can easily break the code by using brute force attack that is by trying out different combinations to get the key. So in order to add this randomness, this IV is used. So let's see an example of how it would work. Now for simplicity purpose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to simulate this entire working and uh, let's try to assume our plain text as A, B, C, D. Okay. So in digital systems, we convert it to binary value, right? So right now I'm just going to assume that the value is going to be one zero one zero. Okay. So we are going to take four bits at a time. So this is plain text. Okay. So this is PT one. So let me just write it down over here also. So this one zero one zero is PT one. Okay. Let's assume the IV that is the first time that we are assuming the IV as four times one. Okay. So this is the IV. Now what we're doing is we're performing an XOR operation between the IV and the plain text one. So this is four times one. Now, if you don't know XOR operation, I have a separate video tutorial on XOR gate and XOR operation. You can check that video. But if you have digital electronics as a subject, you definitely must be knowing what XOR operation is. So I'm not going to get into a lot of detail. Basically, what happens is we have to just write down 1010 that is plain text, the XOR symbol and then four times one. So this is the IV and this is the plain text. So for odd number of ones, the output is always going to be one. So you can see zero and one. We have only one output or only one value is one, right? So odd number of values are high. So that's why the output is one Here, Both the values are one, which means even number of values are one. So the output is going to be zero. Similarly, we're going to get one over here and zero over here. So this intermediate value, what we got is zero one zero one, right? So I'm just going to see intermediate value. What we got is zero one zero one. Now we are encrypting this. 0101 using our key. So let's assume we have some key value and this 0101 is now converted to 1100. Okay. So this is our first ciphertext 1100. So we are just assuming, right? So we are not, we are not sure what we are going to get out of this encryption, but we are just assuming that this 0101 is now converted to 1100. Now this 1100 is our ciphertext block one. Okay. And this again is going to be acting as the next IV for plain text block two. Okay. So we are just going to write it over here. One, one, zero, zero. Now let's assume that even for step two, that is the plain text block two, the value is ABCD only. Okay. So I'm going to say PT two is also ABCD, which means the binary value is going to be one, zero, one, zero for PT two also. But now if you see the IV has changed, right? So IV for the first step was four times one. But the IV for the next step is 1100. So IV here is 1100. Thus, if you take an XOR operation, so we are assuming step number two is 1010. And now if you are taking XOR operation between 1010 and 1100, the output is going to be different, right? So if you see 1010 and 1100, the output is going to be 0110, right? So 0110 is what we get as an intermediate value. And when we encrypt with the same key, the encrypted ciphertext block two is also going to be different, right? Let's say it is one double time zero one. Now you can see that output is going to be different, right? So even though same plain text block was used, that is ABC and ABC in both the cases, the ciphertext block has changed. So now you can see that there is a lot of randomness being added just because of this feedback mechanism and chaining mechanism. So this is what I wanted to explain to you that when we add an initialization vector, the values become very random and it is difficult to crack this code. Okay. Okay. So if you're wondering how the decryption works, the decryption would be exactly the opposite process. Okay. So what we're going to do is we'll just try to see in the same diagram, how the decryption would work. Let's say the ciphertext was 1001 and we're decrypting it, right? So for decryption 1001, that is the CT1 will be first decrypted. So in the first step, you can see that since encryption is over here, the exact opposite would be decryption, right? So the ciphertext block two, let's say this is ciphertext block two is first decrypted using the same key. So we are using the same key and we are performing decryption. Then we get that intermediate value, right? So we are getting this intermediate value. Let's say the value is one zero zero one. And then after decryption, we are getting some value of 
1100 okay so now in the next step what we have to do is we have to perform xor operation with the previous cipher text block so since the receiver already has all these blocks he knows the previous cipher text block and he can pick that cipher text block this one and use it to perform xor operation with 1100 let's say the cipher text block 1 was 1010 if he performs this operation that is xor operation with this ct1 that is cipher text block 1 he will get the plain text block 1 because xor operation is such that if you perform it two times with same values it will give you back the same existing or the previous value so if you do not understand let me just try to show you by actually calculating something let's say the plain text 1 is 1010 okay we are on this step 1 and let's say the iv is 4 times 1 so what would be the xor operation over here the xor operation would be 1010 One zero, right? So we are over here. Now we perform encryption. So we use the key. So there is some key, and then we will perform operation that is encryption, and then we will get some value. Let's say the value is one one zero zero. So this is C T one, right? We got C T one. Now how do we go about decryption? So the decryption would be exactly opposite to this. So the C T one will be taken. So C T one is one one zero zero, right? the key will be used to perform decryption so the key will be used to perform decryption and after decryption what we will get we will get this same value right the intermediate value which we got after taking xor between pt1 and initialization vector so you will get 0101 and if you perform xor operation with the iv again okay so the iv is going to be same for step 1 right so this iv has to be known by the receiver as well as the sender and if we perform xor operation again we will get 1010 so this is exactly similar to pt1 so what you can do is even you can try out some xor operations you can take 1010 and 1111 and perform xor operation you will get 0101 and again if you perform xor operation on 0101 then you will get back the number so this is how xor operations work So yeah that's it for this video guys I hope you understood the entire concept of cipher block chaining and how the feedback mechanism makes everything random and increases the security of the entire algorithm mode So that's it for this video guys if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments how this video was if you haven't yet subscribed make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video tutorial and thanks for watching I'll see you guys in the next video peace